Former Arkansas Governor Asa Hutchinson is criticizing fellow Republican candidate Donald Trump. He did so in a recent op-ed. In a piece titled, Donald Trump Has Led Us Astray, Hutchinson writes in part, he has undermined the fabric of our democracy, citing election denialism and the January 6th riot at the U.S. Capitol. For more, Asa Hutchinson joins us now from his hometown of Bentonville, Arkansas. Governor, why did you feel now was the time to write such a piece about former President Trump? Well, if you're going to be in the campaign for president of the United States, you need to be clear on where you stand and what you offer that's different to the alternative. In this case, of course, Donald Trump is highest in the polls. And so it's like running against an incumbent in many ways. And so you got to make your case. And whenever you look at times of division in our country, and we've had times of division before, We've always had leaders that have overcome that division and tried to pull our country together. And yet we see with Donald Trump, we see people feeding on the division and taking advantage of that division and increasing that division. And that's not what we need. And it's not just uh, Mr. Trump, but it is also uh, President Biden doing the same thing. We need leaders that will try to bring people together and not feed on the division. Uh, we're principled. Uh, we know where we stand. There's going to be a difference of issues, but let's not intentionally divide America. Governor, in that op-ed, you said there is something about the Republican Party that has lost its way. I want to cite for you a 2021 poll done by the Public Religion Research Institute. It's their annual American Values Survey. And in that poll, 30 percent of Republicans said, quote, because the country is so off the track, true American patriots may have to resort to violence to save our country. I presume you disagree with that. What I want to know is, how do you talk to those Republicans and explain to them they're wrong? Well, first of all, I do disagree with it. Obviously, uh, I believe in our democratic systems and our institutions, and we need leaders, again, that will restore confidence in our institutions. You do that by reform. You do by that by telling the truth. Uh, and providing leadership and problem solving. Uh, whatever you look at, 30% of the Republicans in that poll believe that some extreme measures are necessary. I disagree with that, but also it's important to talk to them and to speak the truth and to speak reason. And then you also understand how important the 70% are that disagree with that. And whenever I'm running for office, uh, I think 70% of the vote's pretty good. And so we've got a broad base in the Republican Party that see our country needing to make a course correction, needing to stay away from that extremism and say we need to once again address the problems that face America. And the number one issue in the 2024 campaign is going to be the economy. We're seeing it struggling. We see the interest rates going up. People are hurting. It's going to get worse. We've got to have leaders that will address that and not simply talk about division and the past. Governor, you mentioned a moment ago the importance of telling the truth and poll in the 70% range. Well, in our most recent CBS poll, 75% of those who say they support President Trump say that he won in 2020. When you go to Iowa and New Hampshire, as you will next week going to New Hampshire, will you tell people who believe Trump won in 2020, no, he didn't win, you need to get over that, and we need to move on. Well, actually, I was in Iowa yesterday. I was in a, a GOP county meeting, and uh, they asked me my view on the last election, and I told the truth that, uh, you know, we lost. Uh, President Trump, I mean, President Biden won the election. Now, there was a little bit of hissing going on, but, you know, we moved beyond that, and and we talked about uh, the ideas for the future, and we understood that we might not agree on every point, but if we can agree on the broad principles of where we need to go as a nation, then we can be friends and allies. And so that's how I address it. Uh, they raise it. I'll respond to it truthfully, but we move beyond that. This Republican Party has to be about the future and beating head on the issues that every family faces in America and is concerned about. Governor, you said the economy will be the number one issue. The White House says right now it's House Republicans who are jeopardizing the future of the U.S. economy by not raising the debt ceiling without 
requiring the White House to agree to spending cuts it opposes. Do you support the House Republican plan and this idea that without those spending cuts, there will be no increase in the debt ceiling? Well, I mean, first of all, my understanding of it is that there's a 1% increase in holding increase in federal spending to that level. The important thing is to have a framework as to how we're going to control federal spending in the future. And the President of the United States needs to agree to that framework. Uh, other, and because it's the Biden economy right now that's struggling, and it started out with excessive federal spending that he created and other administrations created. But it has to be brought under control. That is the heart of the problem in terms of inflation and high interest rates and what the feds did today. And so, uh, absolutely, uh, I think there needs to be a framework that ought to be agreed to. And President Biden ought to come along and say, sure, we're going to have an extension of the debt. But I have no problem saying these are steps we need to take to control federal spending. The Republicans put one out there. Uh, obviously, the president needs to show his hands as to how he wants to control that, and then we move forward. Very quickly, Governor, I want to remind people of something from your early term in pu public service. In 1985, as a U.S. attorney, you helped negotiate the end of a three-day siege with some survivalist, Christian identity, white supremacists in Arkansas. You donned a flak jacket and went in there knowing they were armed. Would you have gone in there? if you had known they had AR-15s? Well, yes, because that was what I saw as my duty. Uh, I had a flak jacket on. I was with the hostage rescue team, and it was a successful operation. And so yeah, the answer is yes. I would do it again the same way, and I hope we would have as safe an outcome as we did then. After three days of an armed standoff, they surrendered peacefully it was one of the most successful law enforcement operations we've had in our state. Do you have any misgivings on the wide availability of AR-15s in this country and their continued involvement in mass shootings in our nation? Well, it should trouble anyone uh, whenever we have any weapon that causes uh, mass uh, casualties, uh, death. And so it is a concern. I've thought about it this morning as to where we are as a nation and how do we uh, address this. And, uh, and so we ought to continue the conversation as to what makes a difference. And it starts with the heart of man that takes up an instrument and causes death and destruction and the mental illness that is out there that has to be addressed. If there's things that we can agree upon that will make a difference, then we ought to be talking about them. Former Arkansas Governor Asa Hutchinson, we thank you for your time. Thank you. Good to be with you, Major.